Ceylon. I'm Jacob. And I'm Shawenta. Jake, do you have some news for us? Yes, we do have some news. Um, first off, uh, in unsurprising delay news, Morbius, which is apparently still happening, uh, is being delayed from March to October. Um, mm. Still can't say I'm super interested in a Morbius movie, especially with Jared Leto. Jared Leto is... <laughs> oh man, he's kind of weird. Um, what else? Ryan Reynolds... And um, Kevin Feige have confirmed development has started on Deadpool 3. Oh, that's good. And they say it'll be rated R, mm. but I have a hard time believing that. I think, uh, it'll, I think it'll be rated R, and then Disney's going to make a PG-13 version. Mm. Mm-hmm. That, uh, that's a strong possibility of that being true. Mm-hmm. Um Hey, hey, I, I was mean, okay with the PG-13 version. If they did that right, that could be really funny in poking fun at that, but, mm. I mean. Well, yeah, because yeah. they did the, um, like, what do you say, like, Princess uh, Princess Bride-inspired, like, retelling yeah. of, like, the PG-13 version of Deadpool, mm-hmm. which I guess is pretty good. I didn't watch it, but I heard good things. But I feel like that joke kind of only works once if you just, like, keep doing it over and over again like you would at least have to like change what it's referencing i guess Instead i mean, of the princess i think reference? that's the, kind of the problem i had with deadpool 2 i felt like it was a lot of the same jokes mm. hmm. yeah I, that's I, I i don't know i was more irritated with deadpool 2 for the jokes that they had not so much that it was a rehashing I don't know. I I don't remember any like specific bits from Deadpool two except for, you know, they made fun of his face again, which was you know retread. But I did like like they went to the trouble of introducing the X Force and then got them all killed in the montage. That was pretty funny. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, see, that's the only part I remember. I just remember the parachute part. <laughs> oh yeah, and the the invisible guy was Brad Pitt. That was kind of funny. But oh, I did not know that. Ah, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I don't, I can't believe that Disney is going to make a rated R movie about mm-hmm. their comic hero. Oh, okay. I guess I can believe it if it's literally only like Deadpool and the X-Men who have already been in Deadpool movies and has literally nothing else to do with any other superhero property. I see. Like, totally That's the away. only way I could see them, like, Daredevil even start to do it. Kills his own universe. Oh, That's the title. maybe. <laughs> maybe. Man, I thought there was more news, but apparently not. Um, <laughs> well, we, we do have a... I kind of wanted to kill... Or, do you want to say that first? Uh, no, I mean, there's, like, Umbrella Academy Season 3 news, like, they confirmed, like, there's there's some characters called the Sparrow Family who are coming, but I don't know anything about Umbrella Academy, and it, like, the announcement just seems to be that these characters are coming, and mm-hmm. doesn't even, like, start to tell you who these people are. It's right. just, like... Yeah, they're in there. Well, that just which means, is cool, I guess. That just means that it's coming out possibly 2022, 2023. They just they were in talks and they were like, "Hey, wouldn't it be a good idea to include the Sparrow whatever?" They're like, "Yeah." That's it. I guess. That's all that's all they plan. Um for. yeah. Disney through Star Wars has announced that um they're like relaunching the Lucas Arts like game studio except it's oh. called Lucasfilm Games instead of just LucasArts. Eh, okay. So now I guess th- they're the ones making the video games which is Gotcha. I thought fine, I, I guess. I thought Kevin Wait, did you say Kevin Feige was involved? Uh no, no, Disney through Star like, you oh, know, okay. through Star Wars has relaunched it. 
Because, like, everybody's reporting that Star Wars is announced, but, like, Star Wars is a franchise, not the name of the company. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Yep. So. Maybe um, I'm just getting frustrated at that. Maybe that's just me. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I thought I saw something about Kevin Feige being involved in a Star Wars project. Um, maybe it, it could be something else because, you know, coming out of like D23, there are like 10 different Star Wars projects mm. that are coming at some point over the next several years, mm -hmm. which like, man, this is like the fastest I've ever seen a market get oversaturated. Like <laughs> Mandalorian was good. It was like, like the only good live action Star Wars TV show. And now we're going to have 10 more. Mm -hmm. So, like, we had two good seasons before we had too much. <laughs> but I guess I guess Daredevil also had two good seasons before you then got Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and Iron Fist and Defenders. Uh, I, I so, would not say that was oversaturated. It was too much. Like, okay, the first season of all of them wasn't too much. But as soon as, like, the second seasons came out... And they didn't learn anything from, like, the problems of the first seasons. Like, mm. then it was too much. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Because when I watched them, I was just, you know, I was a youngling. And so, I was like... <laughs> it wasn't good. that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> so you liked the pretty pictures? <laughs> I, was, I was like, they're all great. <laughs> Except, oh, and Punisher. Except Forgot for, Punisher was in there. Except for uh, Luke Cage season two. I, I could not get through that. Luke Cage season two, I didn't even start. Iron <laughs> Fist season two didn't even start. Oh, yeah, Jessica yeah, Jones start. season two, I did start, but only got two episodes in. <laughs> did, uh, oh, you saw Whirlwind? Or what was it? No. The, the, no was like, that thing? I think it, it may have been, but like, we never got like the name drop, or I never got to. Oh, the, the wizard. Name drop. No, it was the wizard. That's what it was. No, 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 that was in season one. That we did see. He got killed by scaffolding. I'm pretty sure that's season two. Ah, uh, see, but I remember it, <laughs> and so it wasn't in season two. I mean, yeah, <laughs> we well, no, it was like in the first episode of season two. I guess we'll have to agree to disagree. I'm not going to rewatch it to check. So. <laughs> Actually, I could rewatch season one, but I'd just be watching all the stuff that David Tennant is in because mm -hmm. he was just like easily like the second best thing about it. You um, know, uh, what I didn't understand about Jessica Jones when it first came out was like everybody saying, "Oh my gosh, she's such a great villain," and I, was, and I don't know. I'm like, I don't know why you would say that. I mean, it's just because he's so like he's a devious person and like. He's not like a just like cackling when a take over the world villain. Like his villainy is pretty exclusively focused on like personal terror towards Jessica Jones, which is mm. interesting. Mm. I see. I thought it and was just because he was from Doctor Who. He, I mean, David Tennant is a good actor. He's apparently very good in Broadchurch, which is a very slow British crime drama, which I have mm. not seen. Okay. Um, but I did see him when he was in Doctor Who and in Jessica Jones, and he was good in both of those. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I mean, hey, he's better. He had a better MCU de debut than the other Doctor Who who was in the MCU, which was Christopher <laughs> Eccleston, who was Malekith in Thor The Dark World, which was uh, bad. Oh, I had I had my, uh, like, nerd series backwards. I was thinking of uh, Sherlock. Oh, Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. <laughs> he was not. He was not Doctor Who, but he right. was Sherlock Holmes. Right. Uh, but yeah, it. Mm, man, they just never learned their mistakes with any of those shows. Mm. Luke Cage was way too long. Jessica Jones was also too long. Daredevil was too dark. Daredevil Season Two was too dark. Iron Fist was bad in every single thing he was in. Okay. I'll give you that last one, but too dark. I mean, that's why like I heard physically, 
physically oh. too dark. Oh. Like scenes were not lit properly. Oh. <laughs> oh. I was gonna ask. I was like, 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 oh, they really got that like dark with the material. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was just you could just not see, see what anything. was happening. <laughs> Like, you had people on Twitter just like, how do I change the brightness on my TV? Mm-hmm. I think a better descriptor is bad lighting then, right? Yeah. Yeah, but it was... Uh, yeah. It was literally it too was. dark. Yes. It was straight up not bright enough, which is a mistake. There's gotcha. no other word for it. Mm-hmm. And, oh, there are some first like, social media reactions from, like, a test audience for uh, WandaVision. Oh. And apparently, it's pretty good, I guess. I mean, you uh, you were talking real slow, and I was expecting for a bomb (laughs) to drop. I mean, yeah, but, like, when people, when you get test audiences, it always seems like it's pretty good. And then, Uh, like, nobody really knows Mm -hmm. until... People like it gets out in the wild, you know, because mm-hmm. like say, Wonder Woman, biased, Wonder Woman eighty four had like really good like pre screen reviews, and then it got out, and then like people hated it for some reason. I liked it, but yeah, I, I literally you know. like I just I don't know, I don't know. Like it's not like that. I understand like some people are creeped out by you know Gal Gadot being all romantic with this guy who she sees as Chris Pine. But it's actually just some guy who's not Chris Pine. You know, someone portrayed it as him, or someone portrayed it as her, you know, being with a ghost. And I was like, that's a, well, no, that's an exaggeration. It's like, are you, okay, are you familiar with Danny Phantom and like the power set there? I, I am familiar with the name Danny Phantom. I don't know <laughs> anything else beyond that. Okay, so we're going to skip past it because it won't make sense. It'll take too long to explain. <laughs> But it's like if in the movie Ghost, if who was that? Kevin Bacon? If he like took the body of somebody else and possessed it and then went and like had a relationship with whoever the main actress in that was. I don't remember. I've never seen it. So so the (laughs) dude she's in love with is possessed by the person she thinks it is? Yeah, so... Gal Gadot is in love with Chris Pine, or Wonder Woman and with yeah. Steve Trevor. Yeah. But I'm trying to put an image in your head so it's easier. Chris Pine died at the end of World War One in the first movie. Mm-hmm. Wonder Woman makes a wish to bring Steve Trevor back. But, like, instead of just making Steve Trevor come back in his body, they make, like, the extra, like, logical leap to have uh, Steve Trevor's spirit come back in, mm-hmm. like, in, inhabit somebody else's body. Yeah. Okay, Which, that's n- a little bit better. Like, I was convinced when you said it the first time that, like, Wonder Woman was just in love with some dude. She's like, you're this dude. And he's like, no, I'm not. Oh. <laughs> She's oh. just delusional. When, when no, it's like, it, to everybody else, it doesn't look like Chris Pine. Like, to everybody else, it's just some guy. Yeah. It's like, only to her, it's still... Steve Trevor, Chris hey, Pine. I can. I mean, I, I still feel suspend. bad for the guy being possessed. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, still but like there. at the end of the movie, it's all fine. He gets his body back. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm just. I was just overcome with emotion with everything else in that movie. I mean, I, I won't say I it was like, like over... oh, that was an issue. Like, I won't say I was overcome with. Uh, emotion, but I will say, like, it is definitely a case of people overthinking things that are supposed to be, like, hand waved. Mm-hmm. But, like, at the same time, like, it's so easy to get to the overthinking. Like, it's not, yeah. it's not a far walk to get there. That's true. And I, I, I don't know, I mean, I don't know how much we really want to get into it, but I'll just say that I really enjoyed seeing Maxwell Lord and his son. And that relationship that they had going. And just like... See, my I watched it with my sister. And mm-hmm. she hated specifically that part. Wow. She, she was so, not like fathers then. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what you're trying to say about my family, Talon. But... 
Uh, yeah, I mean, back to WandaVision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's weird, because, like, I watched, like, they started releasing this um, thing on Disney Plus that are, like, supposed to be, like, character catch-up, kind of, like, six or seven minute um, shorts. And so the first two are, obviously, on Scarlet Witch and Vision. Mm-hmm. And, man, there's so much Age of Ultron in those two shorts. It's <laughs> rough remembering that movie. Oh, yeah. And then also, like, yeah, the shorts do, like, technically a better job than the movies in introducing you to these characters. Like, watching the movies, you don't get any sense of the romance between them until they're on screen kissing. And it's like, I guess this happened. I guess this is fine. But, you know, in the shorts, they edit it together and it's like, oh, okay. I can kind of see it, I guess. And then, yeah. Vision's dead. I don't know how Vision's back still in WandaVision. But apparently there's like one character that we see back that like nobody expected. And so like they're all talking around mm. who this character is. Hmm. Then it then it can't you know, be so Quicksilver. Like, no, it's got yes, to be Quicksilver. That's that's the I obvious. Know. Like it has to be Quicksilver. <laughs> but at the same time, like what if it's, like, then there's the fringe. What if it's not? What if it's actually, like, Magneto or her, like, comic sister Polaris? Well, I mean, it, that's, it's like, that, that doesn't make any sense. Because, or the way you phrased it was some we, someone who is back, but unexpectedly so. I Magneto mean, was never yeah, in but the MCU. How, how unexpected would it be? I mean, yes, for them to be back from something they were never in in the first place. It's so unexpected that it would be nonsensical. I agree with you there. I mean, or it's, you know, it's back or it's back from, you know, the X-Men stuff, which Polaris still wouldn't make sense because that would be from, I think, The Runaways, but nobody watched The Runaways. So. Wait, like nobody watched The Runaways? You'd have to like come in. And wearing, like, a name tag. Or no, not <laughs> Runaways. Uh, the Gifted? Was that what it was called? Maybe. I mean, yes, because Runaways was a Fox show, yeah. About mutants. I think it was... Okay, it must have... Ha- it had to have been then, because, like, Runaways is a different Marvel thing. Okay. Which also nobody watched, but, you know. <laughs> gotcha. I guess oh. that... Oh, no, I go. That is also part of the overload is that like we started getting site specific, like streaming site specific content mm-hmm. other than just on Netflix. And it's like, if you want the whole thing, I guess you got to watch them all, except you really don't. Mm-hmm. After like, I don't know, a couple seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Daredevil, and then none of that meaning anything in, <laughs> except for, I guess it kind of mattered to Age of Ultron. But at the same time, like barely. Wait, what mattered in Agents? Because of Agents of Shield, because that like it's revealed that like Coulson had the helicarrier that came back oh, in okay. Age of Ultron gotcha. to like help everybody out. Mm-hmm. But also they're just like if you didn't know any of that, you could just be like, oh, Nick Fury yeah. did it. Yeah. So it barely mattered. <laughs> you know, another uh I, I think it's still considered Marvel. Yeah, Marvel show that no one watched. I'm assuming because I just stumbled upon it. Hellstrom. Isn't that not out yet? No, that not it's out. Oh well, nobody watched it. Yeah. So I, I would I heard no nothing about it. I don't know. I don't think as many people not watched it as not watched Inhumans because like even <laughs> when that had its test screenings, that was bad. So, and that might have killed the Inhumans movie, so that's kind of unfortunate. Gotcha. If you were looking forward to an Inhumans movie, which... I I don't know, I kind of was. I don't know who it'd be about, because, like, the most interesting one is uh, Black Bolt, and Black Bolt doesn't speak. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, you don't like Medusa or the dog, teleporting dog? The dog's cool, but the dog also doesn't speak. That's Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And you should save a dog for the um, Pet Avengers. That's what you should save a dog for. 
<laughs> Dog, Frog Thor, um, who else? I think Captain, oh, that cat from Captain Marvel. You know. I think it started with a T. Goose. Goose. He oh, could, she could no, be in there. Not even close. <laughs> um, it, it's a Top Gun reference, which is weird because they're barely in planes. Um, <laughs> well, she's, wait, when did Top Gun come out? Oh, like the 80s? I mean, so it could have been, she could that could have been like her favorite movie or something. Yeah, but she wouldn't remember that. Uh, well, didn't she disappear at like 86? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't remember this well enough to know the timelines. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just saying, it's it's, I, it's, maybe, I don't know. And besides, I think she was an Air Force pilot. And that was a Navy movie, so that also doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that would make sense, too. But yeah, save Lockjaw for the Pet Avengers. There we go, um, Lockjaw. Yeah. Um, Inhuman movie? Yeah, I don't know who that would be about, unless it's like... You could do Karnak, I guess, but like Karnak doesn't even have cool Inhuman powers. He's just like... A really good martial artist who even like Daredevil can beat up. <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, I forget who Karnak is. Yeah, yeah, that's good. See, that's part of the problem. Is that like <laughs> okay? I I mean, like you could probably do Medusa, but like, man, doing CGI for hair is tough. Apparently. Mm. Well, I mean, I can imagine. I yeah. mean, yeah, like, like some things strands. do it good. Like, you know, Revenant had that bear, and that bear looked really good. Mm. And, oh, yeah. and that, that had fur, you know, all the Toy Stories, like that was, those were made, or not Toy Story, uh, Monsters <laughs> Inc. was made in like <laughs> oh, okay. the early 2000s, and Sully's like covered in hair. So it's not impossible, mm -hmm. but Brave, thought, yeah. Brave had good hair. Oh, okay. I was going to um, say, Brave, they were super big on the hair animation. Tangled was pretty good, but it was also kind of easy. It didn't like it kind of glowed and it just went around, but it wasn't doing like <laughs> well, crazy. The length was the hard part. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if it's just about like you can't have it about one inhuman because like every inhuman story is about like inhuman society. And how are you mm -hmm. gonna you know? Well, you got the moon. Introduce us to like ten like super forgettable characters. You've got the moon. The moon still exists. Yeah, they've got that moon base, but like, then where are the X Men gonna go when they need to like have a weird fight on the dark? Um, oh no, not the dark side. The blue zone on the moon. <laughs> well, you first got to introduce the X Men, and then you got to work it to how the X Men are kind of like the ancestral brothers of the Inhumans. Yeah, but the Inhumans and the X-Men hate each other because the Terrigen Mists are lethal to anybody who has an X-Gene. Come on, Talon. <laughs> like I said, ancient brothers. I didn't mean it like I they do. were, they like each other. I just meant they oh, were linked by an ancestor. You mean, okay, you mean like Cain and Abel brothers. Yeah. Not. Yes. I, I see. Okay. <laughs> I, d I do like this pitch for the movie where you introduce it as if it's an X-Men movie and then you're like, psych, <laughs> it's not about them. <laughs> yeah, it's about the way less interesting version of the X-Men. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we're going to transition to a break. Uh, yeah, this has been the comic panel. You're listening to us on... 91.5 FM, the People's Radio. We'll be back. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to the comic panel. I'm Cody. I'm Jalon. I'm Jacob. And I'm Shawenta. And uh, previously, I was not here, but mm -hmm. we were talking about um, some news um, regarding... What was it? I remember Umbrella Academy, mm -hmm. Deadpool 3, yep. and Morbius. And uh, WandaVision. And WandaVision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One quick note. I, we will get out of news, but um, I just wanted to respond to something that you guys were talking about here. 
Um, just that it wasn't, I'm, I'm pretty sure my understanding is that WandaVision wasn't just test screenings, but it was actually um, critics. You were critics. Mm. Yeah, that's a little bit better, I think, in my just... opinion. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think the only the only review I read was from uh, Cineblend's uh, head film critic, and it was like a tweet review. It just said that, um, yeah, basically it, it was doing something really different than any other MCU thing has done before. Yeah, like, I, I can see that. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember um, from your review, like, if they had seen, like, the first couple episodes, or had they seen it, like, all the way through? Yes, they got, they got uh, the first three episodes. Oh, I see. Yeah, so on Friday, uh, the first two episodes are dropping, and then it will be one episode per week. Oh, yeah, that's, like, this week, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, it's January. <laughs> New year. Huh. Yeah. Um, too bad I do not have Disney Plus. <laughs> right for me. One single tier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so this week we read um, Ultimate Spider Man mm-hmm. Volume 1. Yep, by Brian Michael Bendis. I said it right that time. Yes. Uh, Michael Meyer <laughs> Zendis. I don't think I was that bad. <laughs> no, yeah. I was making something up. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, and who did the art on uh, this again? No, I don't know. It is, I'll answer that question. So, uh, Mark Bagley. And ah, Mark Bagley. So, that, that was the pencils anyway. The inks were art. Thir- the Bert and Dan Anozan. Colors by Steve Buccoletto or Buccolato. There we go. I'd say Buccoletto. Oh, Buccoletto. Okay. Uh, Mar- Marie Javins uh, and Color Graphics and Transparency Digital. The company. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's what. I <laughs> no, yeah, that. somebody like, named. Is that a role? <laughs> Yeah, um, I kind of assume that that's probably like the colors for the covers, maybe, but I don't know. It doesn't distinguish that. That's just kind of what I'm assuming. Editor Ralph Macchio. Yes. <laughs> we don't usually credit the editor on this show, but fair no, it's just, it's just, I, like I guess for this one, yeah. yeah. It does kind of remind me of the character from uh, Roddy Kid. I oh. feel like every time we do a, a Machio edited book, we bring that up. Yeah, because I know probably. we've talked about this before. <laughs> I, I don't remember anything. <laughs> Put it in the archives. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, check this, the tape. <laughs> so uh, this Spider-Man is uh, a retelling of you know the classic you know character. You know, created by Stanley and Steve Ditko, and uh, it was part of a more larger uh, initiative, I guess you could say, or yeah. series of books that were published uh, like around 2000. Yeah, so it's it's part of the Ultimate Marvel Comics line, mm-hmm. which differentiated itself from the main co- comics line by being a modern retelling of mm-hmm. its classic superhero stories. Yeah. And um, it also distinguished itself by mostly being worse, but <laughs> that's for a later discussion. I would disagree, but yes. You know what? This one's pretty okay, but like some of the other ones uh, really aren't. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, I'm going to say, and I think I brought this up on a different episode, but again, I can't remember. Um, and also, you know, for people who didn't listen last time, um, basically, I think that, like, a lot of the bad stuff came about from Frank Miller. <laughs> Frank Miller is... Or no, wait, no, I'm not thinking, I'm thinking of the wrong Frank, I think. Oh, Mark Miller? Mark Miller. Oh. Or Ron Miller. Oh. Different yes. Miller. Okay, that makes more sense, because I was like, wait, I thought you liked Frank. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah, I didn't remember also, Frank, Frank Miller. Frank Miller also has some bad stuff later on. He has oh. good Daredevil stuff and good Batman stuff in the early times. And then he. Yeah. Once he got like famous, it was a bad time. Yeah. <laughs> and that also. That also happened to be when he stopped writing most, like, big-name characters. So that probably had part to do with it, but... Gotcha. Uh, but Mark yeah. Miller was... How? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mark Miller, but didn't he do... He did other stuff that we've read, hasn't he? Yes. Um, I can't remember exactly which stuff, but he, he definitely has. But, what do you say, Mark? I feel like he's done some stuff that, yeah, Mark Miller. Okay. Or Millar, because it's an A or no. Oh, yeah. That, or whatever. That's right. <laughs> like, we've definitely read some stuff that. Wait, did he do Wanted? I think we liked. Wait, no, we didn't read that. Um, did he do Wanted? So, I don't think he did that. But, Maybe? Um, He did do. Hmm. Yeah, this is a situation, actually, that Jake recently brought up to my attention. Um in the situation of a title being a word that we're not allowed to say. Oh, yes. But, okay. Yes. Um, yeah, he did a title with a bad word in it. <laughs> they made movies out of it <laughs> with <Yes>. Quicksilver. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Johnson, yeah. 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 Now I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chloe Gaze Moretz, I think, was also in there. Yep. Nick Cage was in... Or no. Uh, uh, it was no, Nick Mark Cage. Uh, so, yeah, he oh, yeah. he'd also did Superman Red Sun. He did ah. Wolverine, Old Man Logan. Um, <laughs> yeah, so he's done good stuff. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, but I mean. We're not also... going to write him off just because he did bad ultimate things. Yeah, and also he's like just kind of like, I, I've heard kind of like bad person, though. Oh, okay. Not to, uh, yeah. not to completely disappear. Some creatives him. just are bad people. Yeah, it's true. That's... If we have time, I just, I I feel bad because I guess, like, or I almost feel bad, but I guess people were, like, really piling on him recently on Twitter, but I have some stories about um, John Byrne. Oh. <laughs> some th some yes. new things that I recently And learned. John Byrne is He is who? a famous writer and artist um, of the 80s and 90s. Um, classically working on Fantastic Four, Superman, X-Men, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. Alpha Flight creator. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, didn't he, he? I think he did She-Hulk, too, didn't he? Yeah, he did She-Hulk. Or, or mm -hmm. did some of She-Hulk. Yeah. I don't think, he didn't create She-Hulk, did he? No, he did not. Technically, that credit actually goes to Stan Lee. He was the, that was the last comic for Marvel that he wrote. Ah. <laughs> oh, that he actually like did writing it. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Um yeah. Man, we should read that sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Though, um <laughs> So yeah, so uh this book follows uh teenage Peter Parker living in uh Midtown High, you know, kind of an outsider, being picked on by pretty much everyone. As, uh... Well, not even everybody, though. <laughs> He's got Harry's there, and this okay. reinforces my point I made a couple weeks ago about even before Peter Parker was Spider-Man, he was still getting eyes from people. Well, Mary no Jane point. in particular in this book. Okay, 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 true, but those were not trustworthy eyes. They were, they were Yeah, yeah, you know. I'm, okay, anyway... <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, I'm like I don't really understand. She wasn't. That. She wasn't exercising her best judgment. Are you, you talking so? about Mary Jane? No, I'm talking about Liz. No, that's <laughs> that was after he received his powers. That's the whole. Oh, See, that, yeah, that was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh okay. Yeah. I'm also, so. again, even before he got cool, girls were still into him. Mm -hmm. Um. Also, the, I. I don't accept that argument because that that argument was levied only against the mainstream version of Spider-Man, not the ultimate version. <laughs> okay, but I will counter you with this. For a long time, Marvel wanted this to be the mainstream version of Spider-Man. So... I don't see there. that. I don't see how that counteracts the statement. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm like... I don't know. It it it, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't, uh, but they wanted it to be, and that is like 
Anyway. Anyway. I, I will say this. The relationship between Harry and Peter is weird. I would not consider Harry a friend, honestly. No, yeah. But somehow Peter no. does. I don't, I don't know why. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's I like... mean, he keeps... He keeps asking Harry to, like, get the other guys off his back. And Harry's like, oh, you know, I can't do that. <laughs> the politics of being me. Yeah, high school. I feel like that gets brought up a lot in this book. Like, somehow is like, everybody's like, ah, oh, there's, like, office politics. There's <laughs> high school politics. <laughs> like, the only thing they don't bring up is, like, actual politics. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, like... It's mm-hmm. just, like strangely used often Mm -hmm. also i feel like you know they so they they on page one you know it's just like an intro kind of scene and then page two you know it's kind of the bigger like splash page type thing where it's all like this is the title of the book and Mm -hmm. then there's like a little caption box that's like based on the original story in amazing fantasy number 15 by stan lee and steve ditko and i really feel like you know this scene like i mean i think that the organization of the scenes is like pretty good but at the same time i really wanted that caption box to be more in the scene that was actually with peter parker because i just feel like that captures the idea of the amazing fantasy number 15 which is the uh, first appearance of spider-man now is it are you saying that would it would this change that statement that it's possible that they just meant that this book that they are making, the characters, is based off of the characters in Amazing Spider-Man. Well, yeah, no, I, I understand that. Mm-hmm. Um, that And that makes sense. It's just that I feel like, you know, ev- even though I know that, like, I mean, because really it's like issues one through five is essentially like an expanded version of, Amazing Fantasy number 15, which was one comic book, Mm -hmm. um, it's like, you know, just having that caption box on a part that was, like, definitely not part of that Mm -hmm. issue was, like, kind of strange to me. But at the Mm -hmm. same time, I understand that they do want to get it out there at the beginning, and they also want to have this part happen at the beginning, but Mm -hmm. I just didn't really like that as much. Yeah. Uh, So... For a comparison, I read uh, Amazing Fantasy number 15, and it w- I think there's like there's a huge difference between just the quality of writing from that point to now. Just that's just based off of industry, you know, advancing, and because there was a lot of. I mean, yeah, showing. that that makes sense. It yeah. was like 50 years of like difference and experience in telling those stories Mm -hmm. but uh, not just that just like the actual you know technical stuff of like showing and not telling Mm -hmm. the stan lee was very much like i'm gonna tell you what's happening whereas this comic book is very much you know and i and i say telling because there's a lot of boxes saying Mm -hmm. okay this is happening right now whereas this comic more relies on the art yeah, th- that that problem, and we've kind of talked about this before on previous episodes of the show, like, that plagued early superhero comics because it was, like, I mean, it was a lot of factors. There is the factor of um, a lot of writers were paid per word or per script page, you know? Mm. And there's the factor of, you know, just the 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 craft of comic book making, you know, was underdeveloped or you know at the very least uh stunted by the uh comics code authority uh Mm -hmm. and and all that whole debacle um and also like you know there's even reports of like you know jack kirby saying that stan lee himself just didn't trust his art to tell the story Mm -hmm. so he felt like he had to overproduce you know so would it be like it would give a caption of what's going on and then it would show again like visually what's going on yeah Mm -hmm. pretty much so double okay Mm -hmm. i don't know like as i'm sure like there is a difference and it's been a long time since i read amazing fantasy but you know there are still a couple pages where it's just like 
Peter is out here doing something and like we don't get like thought bubbles or speech bubbles. We get like narration boxes, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. and there are a couple pages that are like just that. So, I mean, I guess like I see where you're coming from and there probably is a difference, but like there are still some parts of this that are guilty of that. Gotcha. I'd also say that like, you know, this does capture a lot of the kind of, I feel like the, the magic of a lot of um, amazing fantasy and like really dives deeper into it. Like you get the feet better. Like one, like a classic panel that's like, it's so funny that it's a classic panel because it's so weird now is like um, basically Peter is at the breakfast table with his Aunt May and Uncle Ben and his Aunt May is like, just like, you know, basically like, I made your favorite wheat mm -hmm. cakes, <laughs> you know, something that like nobody makes anymore. <laughs> and then um, like, they're basically just beaming with pride over him. And like, I think the caption is something like, you know, they, uh, the, um, they loved him like they were, or he was their own son, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. And, um, like, I feel like you, you, one of the scenes in here, you just, like, really get that, you know? It's yeah. like they just can't get enough of them, mm -hmm. or of him. I mean, they can't get enough yeah. of Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Their pride and joy. Yes. Yeah, um, so what's interesting, uh, um, just, like, kind of a difference... Uh, with uh, Peter's social, uh, the people around him, immediately is Mary Jane. She, you know, she's there, mm -hmm. first of all, and she is uh, more of an academic, I guess you would say. Yeah, definitely. Like, like she's more brainy mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. the Mary Jane of the I mean, original yeah, comics. It's, it's funny that you mentioned that uh, she's brainier because they call her Brainy yeah. Janey. Yeah. Because high schoolers are very creative. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What? <laughs> there was even a scene where, so Flash was, you know, trying to put the moves on Mary Jane, and he's like, "Oh, come on, Brady Janey." <laughs> I was just like, "I'm, I'm sure that's not what you want to say." Like, so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I, I, I can I, see how he thought it could be affectionate, but. Mm. So who is? Who are you talking about? The uh, uh, redhead. Mary Jane or Flash? No, no, no. Flash. Uh, so yeah, he's the oh, he's the blonde he's haired the redhead in this comic. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> wait, wait, what did you say, Taylon? He was the blonde haired bully. With kind of the stupid haircut, also. It, it looks like a bowl cut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's real bad. But he's got, mean, like, got his hand broken. Superhero, right? No, his his name is Flash Thompson. Okay, not whenever Flash you guys Gordon. kept bringing it up, I was like, "Is the Flash just in this?" And I didn't realize it. Yeah, no his his real name is actually Eugene. <laughs> that just reminded me of Amazing Spider Man. Put him down, Eugene. <laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah, that's that's a rough one. <laughs> Uh, but he does become a superhero. Yeah, in the in the main in the main universe. Yeah. Yeah. So not not this one. Yeah, not this one. Sorry. Yeah. Um. You know, and I. So Flash has uh, King Kong, uh, which I'm going to say is well, like a nickname. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a nickname. Yeah. I think his last name is Harlan. He, he had. Yeah, I looked up if see if he like had a like regular universe counterpart. Does not seem to. No. He's no. just like just for. Uh, mm -hmm. The Ultimate Universe. It's just like a big guy. He okay. looks kind of like uh, uh, what's that X Man? The Blob, wow. but like yeah, Less you know, disgusting. We're, we're just suppose yeah, <laughs> but like slightly like ten percent less like a mutant, and like we're just yeah. supposed to believe that like some high schoolers look like that. I mean, I, I like would, I don't know. I would say that like the he doesn't look like the Blob to me like at all. You know, he just looks like. You know, he definitely doesn't look his age. He looks like an older man, especially yeah. because he's, like, bald and has mm -hmm. a, a very developed goatee <laughs> and, and his size, yeah. of course. But, like, you know, it's just, like, yeah, he, he's a bigger, like, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, like, is he even 15 years old like Peter yeah. is? Or is he, like, you know, a yeah, senior like at least? <laughs> 
definitely a big guy, but mm. um, I wouldn't say that he's like exceptionally big. I think he's just a, exceptionally big in comparison to everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like well, it just makes such a Kong. weird choice. It's like, yeah, why is he so big? And it's just like <laughs> he's just. It's not like a part of the story, or like it has. It isn't so far. It's just mm -hmm. he's just big. Yeah, I think yeah. I would. I would, if I had to give a reason, which I mean, I'm not saying that like you know is a great choice or anything, but if I had to give one reason, it would probably be that like basically you know the the kind of idea that in high school there's like so many like different levels of ability of people, you know, and different like. Yeah you know, different shapes and sizes, kind of. And I mean, obviously, like, that tracks to the real world, not so, just high school, but, so you know. kind of like how, you know, more modern Spider-Man Homecoming had Flash Thompson not be a white guy. Kind of. I mean, like, I, I don't think it was, like, necessarily, like, diversity, you mm. know? It was, it was, like, basically, you know, just, like, in in comparison to Peter and Flash, it's, like, there's this, like really big guy you know if he if he hurt peter he would really hurt <laughs> peter <laughs> you know yeah and just like i guess yeah it makes him like identifiable from multiple differences or distances excuse mm -hmm. me yeah um like in panels so i guess that kind of makes sense i mean yeah giving him a different body shape instantly made him like recognizable because i was definitely losing track of a few of the other people mm -hmm. oh, um i was gonna say like you were talking about peter has it bad i guess like the bullies are mean to him but he doesn't have it that bad right like mm -hmm. uh when he's throwing the basketball and the teacher the gym teacher is like oh my god you might as well be a girl and like yeah. some of his classmates you see are like uh patting him on the back yeah. and like you know yeah you're like the rest of us and then they get pushed out of the way by the jocks to you know so that they can make fun of peter mm -hmm. yeah. so it's not totally alone social outcast i guess yeah, that, really. that was that was the thing, too. Like, basically, I was all like, man, you know, like, yeah, the bullying is kind of rough. And, like, you know, like, even, like, your teacher is, like, bullying you in gym class. Like, that's really rough. But also, <laughs> like, you have this, like, really cool lab. Like, that's, that's a cool yeah. little personal space, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, you just got to do whatever you want in there, you know? And... And your your parent figures are like really cool too. Like, oh yeah, they're, I, they're like the hippie kind of cool. Yeah, a little bit, especially Uncle Ben. Oh, he was like in a commune. Yeah, <laughs> his um, ponytail. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I I figure that like also they're like trying to weave in the idea that it's like, you know, uh, teenagers are so short sighted, except for like. It's like that's such a kind of antiquated thing. Like, yes, teenagers can be short sighted. Like, oftentimes they are, but it's like this is like such an over dramatic representation of that. Like, it's just like, come on. Like, it, everybody at least sees some sil silver lining in their life. Like, <laughs> you know, when when they have it, of course. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, it's like even when it's not like. Like, so if you can't get it, like, they even, like, have Harry come up and say, it's like, as soon as, like, we're out of high school, you are going to, like, soar past everybody who's here. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm going to be okay because, like, I'm an heir to the Oscorp fortune, but, like, even, like, you're going to soar past me, too. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't help him now. <laughs> so? Yeah, but, like... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I do understand in that scene a little bit that, like, basically, like, uh, Harry is not being very receptive as a friend or potential friend to Peter's problems. He's just like, eh, just shake it off. And it's like, okay, that's Bro, a little rude. My, my dude was just walking in the hallway and then, what, got pushed or kicked? Um, kicked down, basically. Push kicked. Yeah. Kicked from behind. And then his bud... Harry was like, bro, when are you going to learn to move out of the way? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, that was pretty rough. So, I, like, that scene hurt a little bit because I'm like, Harry is absolutely right that, like, you know, he's going to soar past him. And Peter is absolutely mm -hmm. wrong to be saying, like, how does that help me now? You know, because it's like, really? You're, like, this is, like, so such small stuff in the grand scheme of things. But also, like... 
don't just tell him to get over it. <laughs> like, be sorry. I mean, try the superintendent. Uh, the superintendent, like after he, you know, the guys kind of went off. Like he went up to Peter and was like, you know, don't let those guys get to you. If mm-hmm. they come at you again, you know, come talk to me. Like mm-hmm. trying to be supportive. I mean, after the fact, mm-hmm. but yeah. you know, still there. Yeah. Um. I was going to say, I really, I'm not used to seeing Uncle Ben as proactive, I guess. Like, I kind of like the fact that, like, his first introduction is him, like, glaring at the bullies and, like, inviting Mary Jane over to the table. Mm -hmm. Like, he's actually doing something, and you can see how he's affecting Peter's life positively, rather than just, like, patting him on the back and saying a few things. Yeah. (laughs) I I agree with that. I felt like his introduction was, like, both, like, the quintessential, like, parental figure. Like, it's, like, he defends him and protects him. He knows, like, the girl that Peter likes, basically, and, like, you know, but doesn't embarrass him in that way. You know, he, uh, he supports him in any way that he can think of. You know, it's, it's basically, like, perfect parent you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, Until you start acting out. Well, then... yeah, I mean... I, even then, like, he's still then, really supportive. Yeah. He's supportive, uh, well, but it's Well, I'm, I'm not saying that, like, he wasn't supportive. I'm saying that it was all fun and dandy until you started acting out. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, but I, I think, you know, with, with the point that I'm trying to make is that, like, you know, because kids aren't perfect, you mm-hmm. know? they're absolutely not perfect and peter is definitely not perfect so you know but he still responds to peter when he uncle ben responds to peter's imperfections with like basically as perfect as you can get you know gotcha um and like also i think that that also you can see in that first scene also a lot of like you know you can see spider-man in uncle ben you know Mm. I feel like the like it's all encapsulated in there, and I really liked that. You know, just the I don't know, like his character is very like kind of it's like a reverse model because obviously like the character of Spider Man is more developed than Uncle Ben, mm-hmm. but they like injected some of that in there to inspire this Spider Man. I almost wanted to disagree with, like, the perfect parent thing, because, like, when Peter's acting out and, like, always, like, how many times does he, like, rush away from the dinner table or, like, leave the dinner table and Aunt May's like, what's going on? And then Uncle Ben is like, this'll pass. Mm -hmm. And, like, is patting her and, like, comforting her. And I'm like, go after Peter or something. But I guess, like, I don't know. You know, you also have to give kids space. So I yeah, I, I guess I shouldn't be expecting too much. <laughs> I I can I can uh accept that criticism just because I was kind of trying to um I, I was maybe being a little bit over exaggerating because I was mm-hmm. trying to say how what Taylon was saying was different than what I was meaning, but mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So so but to I me what think... I was saying was that oh. he uh, what well, I was saying was that like Uncle Ben was, you know, like, you know, <clears throat> you know, understanding like kind of laid back mm-hmm. but then he was still like all right peter you, we gotta have a talk right yeah yeah i i i just See, yeah like, go ahead Shanta. for the like i think that's good for a character where like they're laid back and that's really helpful in certain situations and in other situations it's almost they're almost too laid back which is what i kind of felt like with uncle ben you know mm. staying there and just like letting peter walk off in a huff but mm-hmm. I do think that kind of changes when he, like, pulls Peter out of the party. Yeah. Like, so, you know, for a while there, it seemed like he wasn't doing enough. And then he finally reached out to Peter and actually was like, you need to stop this. Like, engaged with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which also is, like, really smart, too, to work with Mary Jane, too. Like, you know. Is that what? Yeah. I oh, mean, I that's the... oh, okay. basically. Oh, is that how he knew where the uh-huh. party was? Because yeah. like, I was reading it and like did not know. I thought it was huh. just that she left. And yeah. I mean, up. I guess I guess it's not said. It's just shown to me. I mean, I feel like, you know, basically mm-hmm. she's there. She sees him. He's there. You know, gotcha. and I figure, you know, they have enough of a relationship. You know, uh, their aunts are friends. It's. 
Miss yep. Watson still? Oh no, Mary no, Jane's... That, that's her mother. Oh okay, mm. I couldn't remember because like in in main comics it's like such a small detail, but it, yeah. it, it, they're yeah. both ants. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so in in the Ultimate Universe, um, uh, Mary Jane lives with her mother and brother. Mm. Okay, right. But yeah, so they're they're friends though, uh, Aunt May and Miss Watson, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, basically, I I figure that that's how. Uncle Ben knew where to look because it doesn't give us any other reason. So I just, I guess, fabricated a reason because it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it, like that—that that does makes make the sense. Most sense. Yeah, more than like Uncle Telepathy. I mean, like, <laughs> uncle Ben trolling the local parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. So wanted to take a, a look at Norman Osborn. I didn't. Still a bad dad, no yeah. matter what okay, universe yeah. is in. That's like, he's like, that's like a really good time to like compare like Uncle Ben and the familial relationship between mm-hmm. him and Parker and you yeah. know, that whole thing with the Osborns. Get this kid out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have time. Like it really <laughs> felt like Norman Osborn still viewed Harry as like a toddler, you mm-hmm. know? Like it was just all like, oh, I, yeah. I don't even have to address you. And You're not even his kid. Yeah, not not his kid and, like, you know, way younger than a high schooler. Just mm-hmm. like, you know, I don't need to address you. You have no respect to me. And somebody else needs to deal with you because I don't deal with mm-hmm. kids. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's like he's... They haven't developed their relationship at all because they probably aren't talking. So I do feel like it's a little bit of Harry talking to him kind of like a kid. Mm-hmm. Where he's like, Dad, we're yeah. going to the labs tomorrow. Can we see you? And he's like... Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dad. Uh, oh, okay, so I want to ask also about, like, the Osborne family unit. Did anybody else think until, what is it, like, issue six that Harry's mom was also, like, already like already dead? Or, like, not in the picture anymore? Yeah. Um, I guess mm-hmm. I kind of easily assumed that, but also I was like, I, I just wasn't thinking about it, really. Mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, yeah, that happens. <laughs> When, when we got to that part, which... Um, I, I find it interesting that we didn't see her once. Yeah. Not at all. Kind of, mm-hmm. kind like, of a, we see... I won't say it's a fridge death, but it's, like, kind of a fridge death, you know? Oh, oh like, it's a fridge. See her die. <laughs> like, he's just like, he killed her. I'm like, where? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a fire. fridge. <laughs> I would, yeah, it's it's definitely a fridge, I would say. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that keeps me from saying that is that it's not... a um a hero's motivation mm-hmm. you know it's not even harry's motivation yeah not even harry's motivation i don't know i yeah i feel like you can just like expand that to it is a male character's motivation or like becomes a part of their backstory yeah i mean it, uh, lots of people do expand that it to mean that but i think that mm-hmm. we'll, well, if, if you're expanding that, I feel like that's just a little bit arbitrary. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was going to say, too, is that basically it's like, okay, well, now it's just like any female character's right. death. Um, well, okay, it's not just any female character. It's any female character that, like, isn't a character other than so they can die to further, like, somebody else's motivation. Yeah. Usually a man's. Like- I guess maybe I missed it out a little bit, but um, I feel like I didn't even get that it was, like, Harry's motivation mm-hmm. at all. Like, it seems like it just happens, which in and of itself could be a category, but I don't think I would call it fridging. I guess that's fair. Yeah. But Can you fridge yeah. a character you never introduced? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, can you? I don't... It's just, like, a senseless killing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why I, did he do it? I don't. Uh, I, evil I, reasons. I don't even think <laughs> that that was explained. Yeah, it, yeah, it was not. It was not explained in the comic, even. I, I, At least I, not I, what we read. My abilities, kind of thing. Yeah. Right? I I read I read more of the story and I still don't think that it was explained after that. Yeah, I feel like I've heard awesome. somebody else explain it, you know, and it was like something like. Basically, like, because he's, you know, so Norman Osborn, he turns into the Green Goblin, but, you know, it's not... Not very green, though. Not very mm-hmm. green, yeah, and he's, um, you know, essentially, like, he's kind of like a Hulk kind of thing, mm-hmm. you know? He's he's a monster. He's mm-hmm. not, like, 
you know, cackling and mischievous, like the main interpretation. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, he like, you know, I guess it's like, what I heard was that, you know, because he's like in the mind of a monster, you know, and so he like kind of just like recognized where his house was, like kind of Mm -hmm. innately, but then like also didn't understand his power, and so it was like an accident, maybe? I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know, but yeah, to kind of further explain, like, there's this thing called Oz that Ozcorp is working on, because they are also very creative. In in this comic Uh, book, it's Osborn Industries. Hmm. Whatever, <laughs> Osborne Industries. It's Oscorp. Yeah. Whatever. Oscorp is a better name. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, yes, yeah, so they're working on Oz for some reason. I'm not super clear on what it's supposed to do. It's a miracle. But yeah, but like, what is it? Do, what, like, it, it well, doesn't cure I... cancer. It's not like increasing people's like because they haven't tested it on any people. Mm-hmm. They're just putting it in like. Spiders and rabbits and crocodiles and like various lab test animals. Mm-hmm. One of the spiders gets free, bites Peter Parker. <laughs> Osborne learns about this and is like, wow, it gave that kid spider powers. So and here's my big problem with Norman Osborne in this book. He wants to recreate the situation that created Spider Man on himself, <laughs> yeah. but he adds like this extra step of take my DNA out, add the Oz to it. And then put it back in. So you're not recreating what happened. Right. Well, well, well to, you be can't. Fair, to be fair, the reason why he did that was because he was saying that the spider bite had venom in it that made, you know, Peter ill. Right. And gave so he was him. Avoiding that. Yeah, made him ill and then gave him spider powers. Mm-hmm. If he wants to recreate it, he should at least still use an animal. Yeah. But well, then, like, he, but then, you know. Osborne, you know, thinks so highly of himself that, like, nothing could go wrong by injecting himself with more of himself. <laughs> Which also doesn't make sense that you're going to use yourself as a first test subject. <laughs> that's not great. It yeah. doesn't seem like that's the smartest mm-hmm. idea. Great. And all- okay, so- and here's the other problem I have with Oz, is that, okay, Spider-Man gets spider powers. Great. How does Osborne get flight? And being able to shoot fire from his hands. Yeah. Well, I can't do that. See, Can any of you guys do that? Harry. He avoids Harry. And he has a lot of <laughs> anger. And he's so very all, powerful. That's my super so power. The chemical works on a metaphorical <laughs> level. Is what you're saying. The power it's, of avoiding my son chemical. and familial relationships. <laughs> Okay, now, no, so now do wait, Peter, so, though. <laughs> the, way, the way you explained it, Jake, are you saying that he basically, like, recreated it, but it's as if he bit himself? Yeah, like, okay, <laughs> yes. did you guys ever see, like, the newest <laughs> season of uh, The X-Files? No. Okay, because there's this one, like, comedy episode of Reese Darby, where Reese Darby was a monster... He was attacking humans, got bitten by a human, and slowly became a human again. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah, and I. But I, it was I, funny I, though, because it was Starby. <laughs> but <yeah>. like, <laughs> okay. Um, I didn't know that, that they had comedy episodes in the X Files, but I have very little inf- like knowledge of X Files, so <laughs> that makes sense. Um. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, I I was equally dumbfounded that um he developed those powers when it was like supposed to be himself. Also agree that like that was probably an extra step. He probably could have just injected himself with the Oz. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um also, yeah, still not scientific, not recreating the same conditions. I, I I'm shocked <laughs> they were just, I, he was like he he told the board. He was like well, what do you think more of me would do? And the board was like... Everybody sure. just, like, sure. looks scared and then's like, yeah, this is probably fine. <laughs> I'm like, y- y- wait, <laughs> first of all, he's experimenting on himself, which I feel like is a breaking ethic. You're not supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, like, I, it's just, like, so weird to me because I understand that Norman Osborn is both, like, the scientist and the entrepreneur, 
that's not even like a discussion that you should be talking with your like board of directors or whatever, which I feel like is what he was meeting with. It's mm-hmm. like they yeah, do like, all the just... money stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, okay, you want to hide it from the government. You want to hide it from like the FDA and like the press. You just created a room full of whistleblowers. At that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> or, or, or eventually S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. Also, the the last <laughs> thing on the subject that I wanted to mention, too, was that I think eventually Oz gets retconned as, like, basically, because this is, like, everything in the Ultimate Universe, another attempt to create the Super Soldier Serum that created... Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Because that's also, like, what created the Hulk, right? Right. Who is also big and gray. Yeah. But doesn't yeah. shoot fire. Doesn't shoot no. fire. Um... Ah, uh, yeah, it's... Well, they don't even name like, drop, like, who he is, so... No. Which is weird. I was like, who is this? I know, <laughs> like, I was, like, listing off the different, like, Spider-Man villains I know, and I was like, which one does he look the most like? I do like the kids being like, it's obviously the Hulk. No, I think the Hulk lives in Utah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was a good throw-in. Yeah, and then they've got Doc Ock in there, and... Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I saw another villain, but I don't remember who. I don't know. That's also, like, part of my problem with, like, doing reboots like this is because, like, they always want to fit, like, every name in to, like, the first six issues. It's like, mm. oh, yeah, here's Liz Allen, and here's Betty Brant, and here's Doc Ock for some reason. Mm-hmm. But, like, the only one I didn't see was Gwen Stacy, which I thought was interesting. I think you like, did she see could- her. She just wasn't named. Like, yeah, she could be the blonde that, like, Mary Jane was talking to, like, in the first page. Mm-hmm. But, like, nobody says, like, yeah. oh, hey, Gwen. Yeah. She no. actually gets introduced in Volume 3. Yeah, and I think Gwen is usually, like, you know, in, in the Ultimate Universe, she is, like, uh, like, goth, isn't she? Or, like, yeah, punk yeah. or uh, something. Yeah, you could say it, yep. Yeah. I guess it's the early 2000s. Yeah. I guess somebody <laughs> has to be. <laughs> Um. Yeah, it's it's guess, funny that geez. they they basically made Mary Jane like instead of a party girl, you know, like they made her more straight laced and studious, mm-hmm. and then they made uh, Gwen Stacy, the previously oh. straight laced one, <laughs> uh, be the well, not party, but you know, like just uh, more extreme in. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess, like, at least that kind of makes sense, because is she still, like, the police commissioner's daughter? Yes, yep. she Like, is. not, maybe not commissioner, but, like, captain, yeah. lieutenant? Captain, yeah. I don't captain know Stacey. police ranks. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and <laughs> Captain Stacy did actually make an appearance uh, when yeah. Peter goes to track down the burglar. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. He, I guess he does. Yeah. yeah. Which, I don't know why a police captain is out on, like, a pretty routine call, but... <laughs> Because the I name guess. drop thing, they gotta name the drops. Yeah. <laughs> gotta drop those names. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. yeah. To, to be fair, he's been, this guy has been on a robbing spree for like the entire day. Yeah, it's true. Robbed a deli, <laughs> yeah. robbed a house, I killed a person. I, I even think that he robbed the UCW. Nope. The UW, UCW. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, that, I, that's, that's speculative. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, like. <laughs> So in the original Amazing Fantasy, the robber that killed Uncle Ben robbed the wrestling place, and that's where Peter had the opportunity to stop him. And so it just seems like kind of a lot if you're going to make the leap. Like It's like, what was the purpose of him robbing the deli then if he also <laughs> happened to rob? Well, that that's why would you rob the deli and then go to somebody else's house to rob them? It's like, you already have enough money. Well, well, <laughs> But I mean, also- I will I will put this forward. It, like, the wrestling robbery seems like it was way too smooth for all of the other robberies <laughs> like, to be the same person. Okay. You know? Because okay. he yeah. got in, got out, nobody saw at the wrestling place. People caught him at the deli. Uncle Ben caught him. Like, <laughs> literally everywhere else this man goes, he gets seen. Yeah. But not the wrestling place. Mm-hmm. Was- I, just, I just find it odd that there was a robbery... At the wrestling well, place, I mean, and I, then somewhere else. Yeah, lots of crime happens in New York, <laughs> and I think that that's like, true. It was, it was supposed to be like you know, Peter. Peter has this incident where he's blamed for you know being a, a criminal, and then he sees this other person 
who like I mean it's more obvious that he's actually stealing but still mm-hmm. it's like gosh that like you know the people are just crawling down my throat trying to get me and I'm like I'll just like let this guy go I have enough problems mm-hmm. yeah yeah I, I think um <clears throat> I really appreciate this this story, um, um, uh, among a lot among a lot of things. Wow, I can't even see. This, in particular, amongst other things, for the trajectory that Peter had to go through. Like he, you know, he went. It was like straight laced kid, you know, kind of like you know, quiet, and then he got powers, and then he was just like. Okay, I'm rebelling against, you know, being put into this, you know, cast in high school. I'm rebelling against even the people who raised me. I'm and I'm even rebelling against just, you know, the bullies themselves, you know, doing things that he would not really do, doing things that he himself recognizes isn't really him, but doing it because, well, you know, I've been this guy down at the bottom my entire life. Why yeah. not? Now I have an opportunity to get it, to get above these people. Yeah. And I'm going to take every opportunity I can to do it. Also, before you finish that part, I I also really appreciated the um the part that's like you know not only is he like rebelling against like the stuff that he doesn't appreciate in his life, but he's also taking advantage of the opportunities that he now has and like you know he's like helping his uh his aunt and uncle pay for bills you know because mm-hmm. it's like who 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 hasn't struggled before you know as a family and then like basically been like man you know i'll if if only i could you know somehow like win a million dollars and then like give some of it to my parents mm-hmm. you know yeah. so it's like you know, yeah i felt like that yeah was, that i feel was like he real. gets he gets kind of accused of being selfish in some ways, but I don't, I mean, it really can't compare to how, like, Osborne gets when he becomes the Green Goblin. (laughs) Like, what, how he reacts to having powers. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, Peter's using his power, like, chooses not to go after a criminal, like, chooses to use it for, like, a showy, dramatic kind of thing, so he can make a few bucks, but, you know, for his family's good. Mm -hmm. And, I don't know, just I know it's supposed to be the whole thing of like, oh, he's being selfish, he's a teenager, he doesn't see the big picture. But obviously it's not as bad as the Green Goblet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I also like, um I just feel like basically, um, you know, like and Peter kind of says it, like I think it's after Uncle Ben gets shot, maybe, or no, 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 no it's before. It's when he he leaves the house because, like, you know, he gets the D in English or whatever. Mm-hmm. Which also, like, is that normal to get a progress report for one class? Is that how other people I, like, yeah. do it? Yeah, I've got a couple problems with that scene <laughs> in a lot of, like, the timeline of this book. Because there are two desk-smashing incidents, which somebody in the scene says t- took place, like, a week apart. Mm-hmm. So it's like... If he is getting a bad grade already, like, he was on the way there before, <laughs> like, before he got on the basketball team, Good point, number yeah. one. Good point. Number oh. two, like, it is, like, the day after Ben is shot is, like, he's dancing in the basement for figuring out what the web fluid is, and then is out there, like, trading jokes at the Goblin in the middle of his burning high school is, like, also the next day. It's like, what happened? Well, he understood what his. I was going to say, like, it, it's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen Uncle Ben's death be, like, not shown on screen, technically. Mm. Like, it was almost kind of anticlimactic. And I don't know. I didn't mind it too much that way. Like, it almost was better that way instead of this big incident, because mm-hmm. we kind of knew it was going to happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe not all the readers would. Yeah. But yeah, that kind of, like, almost just stomach drop kind of thing mm-hmm. about hearing bad news after the fact. Yeah, you and you, you but, got yeah, to... The, <laughs> oh, what were you saying say something? I was just going to say the dancing sequence. I totally forgot that that was like right <laughs> afterwards. That's so weird. Yeah. Was, the most of, of offensive thing in that scene was that he was wearing tidy whities 
Like I, I don't, I don't understand. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll... yeah, and like <laughs> the same time, he also got his costume altered somehow. Yeah. No, with the webs that <laughs> he did. made, which don't disappear. I, I don't. Yeah, he also yeah, got, like, the spider put in, too. That's yeah. not made out of web. <laughs> Peter Parker in his underwear learning how to shoot webs mm-hmm. is not, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they definitely were making that a thing. <laughs> what, what, what? The spidey underwear? No, be, being in your underwear and oh. shooting webs. Oh. <laughs> The, yeah, anyway. Gotcha. Oh, this you know, is a kid's show. You know, he said, what practical use would be would this be for? Because he was like, maybe I'd get rich. And he's like, but what practical use would Being be? Spider-Man I'm like, I'm is sure the practical use. Like that. <laughs> I, I thought of like like um, climbing up a mountain, or you know, rock climbing. That's mm. what I thought of. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, a, or a pulley. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, he he literally in mainstream universe uses it for so many things. <laughs> you can make a parachute out of it. You can make a mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, just like <laughs> like literally any. Okay, thing. it's like you're smart, Peter, but you're not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so like Kayla, he, you... that, that's why he's the technology guy, right, and not the uh, marketing yeah. guy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he's yeah. smart, not creative. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> uh, um. So, okay, Taylor, you read a little bit more about the Ultimate Universe and know a little bit more. Do, uh, do you know, is there a reason why, like, the last act of Richard Parker was to, like, why was he in possession of what would eventually become, like, Spider-Man web fluid? Like, the chemical formula He's for it. Because that just seems to, like, line up too closely. He's actually secretly <laughs> Ultimate Paste Pot Pete. <laughs> oh no! No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, oh. I, you know, I don't actually know what. I don't actually know why. If they, at least in like, regards to the web, you know, web formula. But there is like an amazing fantasy. That he just like. Place. Eventually. Oh yeah, I mean like, yeah, because like Amazing Fantasy is just like, oh yeah, I spent a night in the lab. I got this cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Seems like it works out pretty well. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, this is, like, the last gift that he got from his dad was mm-hmm. this obscure chemical formula. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, yeah. Yeah. I, I'd say that, um, you know, eventually he gets another gift, and that's the symbiote. Right. Yeah, that that was... Oh, ultimate. yeah, that's an ultimate thing. That's yeah. right. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I... Uh, I played the Ultimate Spider-Man video game, and they had like a like a quick like origin story, whatever. And part of it was how did Venom? Like, how is Venom a thing? And it's mm-hmm. uh, Richard Parker and Osborne work together to like no, it's uh, Eddie create Brock's father. this. Was it Eddie Brock's father? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, yeah. Whoever it is, like they like engineer the symbiote, mm-hmm. which like. They, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, like they just kind of casually created conscious life, and then <laughs> yeah. just like yeah. kept it in a bottle in a freezer for years. Mm-hmm. So that's not great. Yeah. Also, like I just isn't it great when superhero comics in particular do the thing where it's like, ah, my old childhood friend that I haven't mentioned until now when yeah. they reappear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's Eddie Brock in the Ultimate Comics. Yeah. It's just all like he's here now. I mm-hmm. knew him. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't yeah. mention him before. There was no reason. He's not here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't have memories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like that. Anyway, getting back kind of to the point, though, I, I did find it weird that, like, basically it was like, this was the last thing that Richard Parker worked on, but then they kind of do the same thing with the Venom symbiote later. It was like, mm-hmm. also, explainer for the Venom symbiote, because we've kind of, like, stepped around it because we know what it is, is, or um, at least I know that Jake and you know what it is. Um, I don't know if you want to, if you know anything about Venom, if you've even, like, seen the bad movie that came out semi-recently. But oh, it was pretty good. What, what were you going to say, Jake? <laughs> The Venom movie. It was pretty good. Uh, it was a movie. It came out. Yeah, you're right. Entitled to your opinion. 
Anyway. It is a movie that came out, and I'll bet you it's better than Morbius movie. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, I'm not... I, I, I'm not, I mean, I don't know if... I, I feel like I would like Morbius better, but whether or not it's received better, uh, yeah, I might give you that one. Anyway, so basically, um, the symbiote is a living thing that um, came from an alien world... And basically, in a comics event that we're not going to talk about right now, Spider-Man gets it, because, and he just thinks it's a replacement suit that a computer makes. But it turns out that that computer was actually the alien's prison, and it can basically mold itself into anything that another person wants. Mm -hmm. And so it just made itself into a suit for Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And basically, it gave him like elevated powers and organic webbing, and well not organic webbing but webbing that comes from it um i guess it's organic because it comes from it but not from him <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> um yeah and then it basically though it starts to kind of uh force him to be mean and um so he takes it off and it becomes venom when it merges with somebody who, you know that also hates uh peter parker and then he looks really scary and strong and has the memories and uh, strengths of Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. But not, like, memories where it's all like, ah, now I think I'm Peter Parker, but, like, memories where it's like, ah, I know that Spider-Man is Peter Parker. Yeah. Although they don't ever do a lot with that knowledge, you know? It's mostly just like, I'm... I am going to murder Peter Parker. I don't want to, like, mm -hmm. ruin his life that much. One time they really far, traumatized yeah. Mary Jane to the point where Yeah, Spider -Man I guess was... that's true. Yeah. <sighs> in the in the See, I, I actually liked this book. So like I would totally be willing to like read more of it and get that far. Like I like the little moments yeah, okay. of development, like at school even. Like normally I find those super boring, like generic bully pushing, but there's like pushback mm. and there's like the changing of dynamics a little bit, like breaking that dude's hand and like mm -hmm. the pressure that put on his family, even though he was finally fighting back kind of thing. Yeah. So like, I would read more. Yeah, I agree with that, actually. You, you know, I was, for a long time, I was against a lot of um, Ultimate Universe um, material. And I'll say that it's like a very, very simple uh, example of me literally judging a book by its cover. I mm -hmm. thought that the cover art was the interior art. <laughs> 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 and I was like, oh, so that's what that's going to look like on the inside. I just really don't like that. The cover mm. art is... Didn't even bother cracking the book open. No. You just, like, saw it <laughs> on the shelf. Like, did you even bother to pick it up? No. Or... No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Oof. That, that, that is funny because I have the... Exact opposite reaction. <laughs> I I actually really enjoyed looking at the covers. <laughs> I don't know. They, so they awesome. weren't really anything special. And I, like it kind of feeds into a problem I do have with the covers and the book. Is like there maybe it's like something wrong with me, but like there's something about like seeing Spider Man in costume in this book that I do not like. It maybe it's the mm. style, maybe it's the anatomy. There's just like something off to me. And I don't like it. Gotcha. Maybe the head's too big. It might be that the head's too big. I should say, sometimes the anatomy was really funky in some of these. And, like, I saw some of the pencil sketches in the back. I was like, these look so nice. <laughs> and then, like, I look at some of the panels and, like, people's faces are just way too long. Especially for the close-ups. Some of those close-ups were not great. But yeah, I... I've always known this as a classic one, so mm -hmm. I was kind of used to it. I'm kind of interested to know um, on, yeah, it's this page. I even already have it up. Page 15, it's like, you know, one, part of the introduction of Uncle Ben. Um, you know, it's it's the scene where he looks over at the bullies, you know, disapprovingly. And I'm all like, I kind of like that face, but also it's kind of like weird, you know, mm. the shape of his face. Just like, I don't know. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it exactly because it's like I like it, but I don't like it. Yeah. 
There's um, like panels sometimes. Um, I don't remember which one it is, but it's like Peter and like Uncle Ben like looking at each other, smiling, and it's like cut off to like this much of their face, like <laughs> just barely to below their smile, and then like part of their forehead, and like that's it. Like the panel of two people's heads like cut off badly. It's just so weird looking. But I mean, it got the point across. And it was only upon like second reading, I was like, this is weird. I don't enjoy the proportions. Yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of agree with some of the that. The, the, honestly, the panel sizing and a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it, I, I liked it. Um, I liked the book as a whole, and I would be willing to read more as well. I felt like, you know, so in one way, the writing had like a cinematic quality or even like maybe less than cinematic but more like tv show-esque quality mm-hmm. to it um but at the same time like the writing was a little bit occasionally i'll say even um like a little bit like feeling obviously not like auto-generated but like i don't know how to explain kind of like better. paint by numbers yeah yeah maybe you know, paint in by a way numbers. yeah I, I like that description of it, and that and a, that's really like you know a small criticism, um, you know where it, it wasn't too often. But if I were to say something about it, I'll say something negative. Yeah, I guess there. I would say there are a lot of developments that rely on like people at Oscorp or the Osborne Industries uh, being <laughs> bad at their job. Where it's like okay, like the very first thing that happens is like. Uh, Norman hands off the spider. It's like, put it back in its container. The guy puts the spider back in the container, but doesn't put the top on for some reason. Yeah. That's a, hey, it's a scary spider. Especially, he's scared of the spider, so wouldn't you even more be like, let me get that lid on so I can get further away from it? Yeah, yeah it's like a really important lab asset that you're just gonna not properly secure. Also, keep in mind, he didn't put it in the container. He threw it in the container. <laughs> Still, though, like, you, like even if you are personally afraid of spiders and your boss tells you to go put a spider away, you can throw it. But then it's on you to go get somebody else <laughs> to get that spider. Yeah. Gotcha. Definitely. <laughs> and then there's, like, I guess Shaw is pretty good at his job, but, like, I don't know. I guess the arc kind of goes fast for me where it's, like, Okay, pay for Peter's uh, hospital visit, get his blood. Oh, he's dying, so we have to kill him. Mm-hmm. Oh, we didn't kill him, so now we have to keep it, our, our eyes on him again. Well, so we not, may as well have not tried to kill him. It's not just that we didn't kill him, it's that he dodged our attack. No one could Yeah, do also, that. like, I, I want to know what Shaw's plan was. It's like, okay, you're going to hit him with the car so it looks like an accident. Great. Okay, you missed him with the car. So your next idea is to pull <laughs> a gun? Him. Okay, so... so That's okay, not going to look like an accident. This is how weird it is. So he pulls the gun, and he's holding it, and he doesn't look behind him to see if Peter Parker is walking to him. Because Peter Parker leaves, and he's like, what happened? He's supposed to be here. <laughs> I'm like, bro, that's... I'm but that's not you even You have like, a gun. You can just drop him right there. <laughs> Just get out of the car, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very subtle to miss hitting this kid, this dying kid, and then shoot him mm-hmm. at the scene of the crime. Uh, yeah. But that's not even the end of, like, people at Oscorp being bad at their job. Like, Harry is just able to walk down in the lab with, like, no indication that anybody tried to stop him. Mm-hmm. And the door to the lab where they're doing this illegal human experiment is just open. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, how is... How is that allowed? Yeah, honestly, like, you know, you, like Norman's all like, you guys don't even know what clamped down means. And I'm mm. like, well, also, you could see the door is open. <laughs> like, are you blind? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's like, hey, he's your son. I, we didn't realize that that's what clamped down meant. <laughs> I guess. But yeah, I want my open. son... <laughs> I want my son to be able to witness the illegal human experimentation I'm about to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a wait, good wait, wait, father-son wait, actually, bonding activity. I, no, no, I think Norman would be like, son, you're about to witness greatness. 
No. Yeah, but he doesn't no, though. <laughs> absolutely, that would like, that... not be Norman's <laughs> thought process. <laughs> I mean, maybe not in this. Yeah. I, did, I, 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 there is a characterization of Norman where he's like, he, he would say something like that. Yeah, he's I agree more that like, there are. You're not special of... enough to be here, sort of. Yeah, thing. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I, okay, I, and then like I, I have a follow up to Oscorp employees being dumb. <laughs> I like Doc Ock is like tasked with. Yeah, okay, we're gonna invite Peter Parker to Oscorp. Because he's not dead, so we need to see what his blood is doing. And, and uh, Doc Ock's like, all right, I got it. Foolproof plan. I'm going to offer <laughs> to take his blood so he can so he can look at it. It'll be a close science experiment. And if he says no, I'm just going to stab him in the arm with a big needle. <laughs> like, how is that the plan? I don't think that you can draw blood like that. Like, I've had my blood drawn a couple times. Nobody ever just stabbed my arm. <laughs> How is that the plan? How are people okay with that? Yeah, I don't know how he like he he must have drawn like a bone marrow if the needle was able to get in there. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> extremely painful process. Just yoink. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I do say that I really like what Peter said when he was asked. You want to draw blood? He was like, nah, I prefer to keep it all in its original container. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, there's that old Spider-Man wit. Thought like, basically, <laughs> Spider-Man, or er, Doc Oh Ock, my goodness. And, you know. Yeah, Doc Ock looks so pleased with himself afterwards. Like, we see him, like, when, like, Harry pushes him out of the way to, like, go see why Peter's running out of the building. <laughs> And, like, he just looks so smug in that panel. And then I guess, like, Harry just must leave without asking any follow-up questions. Like, hey, what'd you yeah. do to my friend to get him to run out of the fire <laughs> exit? Like, like I mean, what, I, what was I that felt, about? He's not usually the person like to do that. Like, even saw the incident, so I really feel like you'd be like, you know, hey, what the heck, mm. you know, the, the, you're, you're not supposed to do that. And mm -hmm. then, like, also, like, apologize to Peter the next day when he sees him again, you know? Like, I don't well, know. Well, to be fair, I don't think he would have seen him the next day. Yeah, maybe not. Like, it's a weekend, and then mm -hmm. Uncle Ben dies, and then, like, blah, blah, don't go to school. And then your your parents yeah. die. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> wow, your parents died? My parents died. <laughs> What's happening mm -hmm. here? <laughs> We're kindred spirits. Uh um <laughs> Yeah. Silly silly stuff going on in this mm -hmm. book, but um Yeah, I don't know. I think it was good. Um the art was better than I expected. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like a lot of the Mark Bagley art reminds me a lot of um uh, I'm I'm gonna blank on his name, but it's like, you know, more modern, uh like Dan Slot written Amazing Spider Man. Mm. Um I can't remember the like, you know, he's he's gone through a couple of artists or well, he, Dan Slot isn't even writing anymore, but <laughs> when he was writing, which, you know, he had a very long run on Spider Man. Um he, yeah, he went through multiple artists, but mm -hmm. one of the main ones. Was he was he just um, Amazing Spider-Man, or did he do he Superior, did Superior as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so who was that artist who did... Um, oh, I, th I feel like we've talked about it um, sometime. That Wolverine art? Um, Wolverine art. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Well... Like Wolverine in Superior oh, wow. Spider-Man. Well, when it's like the Avengers are like checking to see, is like, are you like a scroll? Yeah, I, th or I think that's the like same a shapeshifter who's pretending that's the to same be. Guy I'm comparing to Mark Bagley here. I can't remember his name, mm -hmm. but um. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, he did. He did uh, a lot of the character designs on the uh, cartoon Legion of Superheroes, but mm. I don't remember his name. Gotcha. Um, it probably won't come back to me either. I'll have to look. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, good character design, kind of. Um, 
Man, bad, kind of bad character design for Green Goblin. Don't like that Green Goblin. He's, uh, he's now, not even green. I, I, I do like that Green Goblin. I, yeah. But I don't like... I don't know. I, 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 don't I would like, like it. the uh, Into Spider-Verse version of this Green Goblin. With the wings? Why? I don't know. It's... It's it's weird that we mentioned it, but like I don't really mind like Monster mm-hmm. Green Goblin. Like I think Monster Green Goblin is fine. I think like they just did this version a disservice because like even in universe characters are going like, are you sure that wasn't the Hulk? He was big mm-hmm. and gray, just like the Hulk is. It's like try to give him like mm-hmm. some unique traits. Like he's got a big purple cloak, yeah. which I guess is kind of unique, but in horns. Those are kind of, you know, they're like generic, you know what like his monster. Head looks like actually, his I guess head it's looks ca- like abomination. Like I mean, mm. not not the Tim Roth abomination. Ah, uh, abomination. Uh, hold on, let me get to a panel so I can see for myself. Yeah, like I'm on page uh, uh, one eighty one. One eighty one. Yeah, it really does. Like, I guess his face is kind of green. Yeah, it, it but, is. You know... Do they have green pants? There's no, some stuff that, like, doesn't make sense about his design. Because, like, where does he get, like, that gem in belt? Yeah. yeah. Like, he wasn't wearing that in nope. the experiment. Did he go to, like, a Hot <laughs> Topic and, like, pick that out? Yeah. Or And, like, again, I just gotta mention, like, if the intent... Because, like, I mean... Okay, it sounds silly when we joke about it, but the intent was to make a, like, basically a superhuman, you know, and especially with the, like, knowledge that they were trying to create the super soldier serum, it makes sense. You know, it's like, Captain America doesn't have animal powers, he has human powers, just, Mm -hmm. you know, exaggerated. So it's like, it really does, in, like, Mm -hmm. its own comic book way, make sense. But it's like, the powers that he got is not what resulted at all. Like... (laughs) Absolutely not. And it's just like, but why? Why did that happen? Gotcha. And I don't know. Maybe maybe you're just not supposed to ask why so much. But... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just take it. <laughs> just take it. Yeah, but okay. But if we didn't ask why, Cody, yeah, we would yeah, have a show. It's so. True. Also, <laughs> I am looking at these sketches, and Shawenta was absolutely right. Um, these sketches are very good. Even Green Goblin's sketch is really good. Man, I'm blaming the anchor. <laughs> yeah, man, look at that. Oh. Mormon's there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Of the like different designs, like it seems like the sketch to a uh, panel... Like, Green Goblin seems like he Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that now instantly I love his design. I'm just saying it's better you know, in this sketch I will, to me. I will say this sketch makes him look slimmer. Yeah, I agree. It and, does make him look slimmer. And I'm kind of, and I'm kind of yeah, okay with little, that. Yeah, a little slighter. Like, he looked really big. Yeah, I mean, just don't make him a big gray monster <laughs> like the other big gray monster who's already well, in the universe. Gray. You know, he shoots fire. Yeah, he's got, like, some green stuff, but, like, the Hulk could be doing that. Oh, you don't Red know. Hulk does that, doesn't he? he shoot fire. No, he does not shoot fire. I mean, oh. I guess he's... No, it's, like, gamma yeah, radiation, um, I think. Yeah, he absorbs and expresses gamma radiation. Gotcha. Which is, like, a kind of heat, but, like, not yeah, fire, yeah. technically. It's, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> kind of dumb. Uh, um, you know, so I will say that I think that um, I really enjoy this comic book, and it um, and it also because of just like how the high school aspect of it. I I even like that arguably better than just seeing Spider Man, which is interesting because that's how I felt once Peter got into college of the original. Because mm. like okay. once he started getting into college, that's when I was like, okay, I'm into Peter a lot you're, more. You're than talking Spider-Man. about in Amazing Spider, er, yeah. yeah, Amazing Spider Man. I was yes. like, <laughs> was I supposed to say fantasy in that one? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that a lot of people, you know, basically, that's like <laughs> they kind of 
uh, Stanley kind of fast tracked, I feel like, you know, getting him out of high school and into college because, mm-hmm. you know, they were starting to develop an old readership very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like, okay, they don't want to see him in high school situations. They want college situations. Yeah. Um, match with the, the situations that mm-hmm. they're in. Um, but yeah, uh, speaking of high school, like I, you know, I like the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh yeah, I like it fine. <laughs> the Ferris Bueller's Day Off reference was too much for me. <laughs> I'm like, wait. So I mean, okay. So how I've never seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but I understand that that scene reminded me of Bueller. Yes, Bueller. that's that's, that's it? the one. Okay, I wasn't sure if they were like actually talking about what they yeah, were talking cause, about. Yeah, because it was the exact same dialogue right before, no, not right before he takes attendance, because basically they drop in on that class during attendance, and he's obviously not there, and then mm-hmm. they drop in later when um, he goes to pick up uh, Ali Sheeny's character, and he's or maybe I'm mixing up my scenes, actually. No, because she was in English at that point. I am nerding out about <laughs> these different scenes in a movie too much. But so, basically, it's the same dialogue. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, he's talking about the exact same thing. And he goes, anyone, mm-hmm. anyone, and then gives the answer way too fast. Yeah. Anyone. <laughs> yeah. You know, what I was annoyed with, um, not this book, but the movie Amazing Spider-Man copied... The scene between Uncle Ben and Peter, right before Peter storms off saying, oh yeah, if my father was so great, why isn't he here? Like, they copied that almost word for word, and that irritates me with Amazing Spider-Man. I don't know, sometimes you just gotta be all like, you know, I mean, like, think about it if it was just a, a prose book, though, like, wouldn't you want at least, like, one, like, line that you, that people like to be in the movie? What do you mean, like, like if they were to say, with great power comes great responsibility? Well, no, no, I mean, like, you know, like, for instance, like, I don't know, Harry Potter or something, like, if you, if you read the books, and then you, like, there was a line, I don't know, Jake, is there, is there a Harry Potter line that people like? I don't know. (laughs) I mean, there's, there's one that is, like, that, like, has been, like, completely butchered, because, like, in the book, Dumbledore, like, Goblet of Fire is what I'm going to talk about. So, in the book... Uh, Dumbledore like walks up to him and asks calmly, specifically asked calmly, did Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? And then in the movie, it's whoever the actor is, is like running at him, shouting, Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? <laughs> bad, bad, uh, so, bad you know, example. Try again. Um, not quite what you meant, but um, I don't know. Boy who lived is like, you know, if like people. Yeah, but I know what you're saying. It's like, if somebody, like, says the title of the movie in the movie, everybody can go, like, hey, they said the thing. And it's kind of like that. Kind of. I mean, I just feel like when you're adapting material, which, yes, it's like Amazing Spider-Man wasn't (laughs) Ultimate Spider-Man the movie. It was, you know, pulling from (laughs) thousands of Spider-Man comics that people like, you know. But (laughs) I would say that, like, you know, one, the ultimate universe was in some part created to kind of like be a, a prospect for Hollywood to, you mm-hmm. know, more easily adapt their, their properties into movies. And two, you know, it's like if, if that line resonated with readers particularly, or even if it resonated with like, you know, the creative team in uh, for the movie, you know, then it's like, well, I feel like, you know, this is like a really important line, and I feel mm. like that, that would be the same for a direct book to movie I see. Yeah, um, I see. adaptation to. Like. Yeah, and like I would say it fits in like the Amazing Spider-Man movie because like both of those movies had to deal a lot with uh, Peter's parents. At least like definitely the second one, yeah, probably the first one they too. They were definitely going um, towards the Ultimate Spider-Man. Um, version of his parents in that movie and yeah so like it it makes sense that in this book that is also kind of focused on peter's parents more than amazing fantasy was or like any of the first like when did the richard parker is like actually a spy Um, for shield like when did that that start amazing spider-man annual 
number four? No, no, that's way too early. I'm going to say six. Hmm. But So at least like half a decade went by before <laughs> Peter Parker had a reason to yeah. care about his parents. Mm -hmm. Is what I'm hearing? Great. It's exactly. so all like, yeah, like didn't really care until like future versions where he's like, I guess he was kind yeah. of important. You know, you know, I think we should also say, so um, in this, you know, it was Uncle Ben who said like, you know, there are great things coming your way, and with those things comes responsibility. Mm -hmm. In the amazing fantasy, it was just Stan Lee saying, and now he learned with great power because great responsibility. Definitely. And I was like, I just think this book executes that much better. Yeah. I can't remember if this was the first time I... that the comic said that Uncle Ben said that, or if um, they had already... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the first time, and then later the mainstream mm. universe retconned it to be that yeah, Uncle Ben had said it. Yeah, I mean, at least with that, I can say like this did that. This book did that better than um, like the original, specifically mm -hmm. for that. I won't say that for all of it, but. <laughs> um, you, you know, I I think um, for. I, to me, there's just so much past this volume that, like, really endears this series to me. And so it's, like, it's hard It's hard to really say, like, how much I enjoy this series without having to reference the stuff that will eventually happen. Yeah. I don't know. I will say... Um... This I'm still technically right that this is the only good part of the Ultimates because I haven't read anything else and this was good. I so, I actually like the Ultimates. I, I I think it got a little dark, but I still like it. That's because um, uh, Brian Michael Bendis and uh, Mark Millar worked on it together. <laughs> so, or wait, no, no, no. That's like that's not even ah, right. I no, see. I'm wrong. I oh. will correct myself. Mark Millar did all of the <laughs> Ultimates. Um, that was Ultimate X-Men, and that's half good, half bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you mean like it got dark because... Um, or just that I liked it because... Or no, no, I, I was just saying that, um, uh, that it's half good, half bad oh, because gotcha. uh, the two writers were working on it at the same time. <laughs> oh, Ultimates, gotcha. I'm like, eh, I've heard that it's just bad, and so <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to I, read it to know. I mean... I mean, okay, actually, <laughs> let me even clarify that a little bit more it's not just bad and it's it's not even like awful there are awful things that happen and yep. there's some awful writing but also i've heard that the art is like you know really like you know like super cinematic and like clean mm -hmm. um and, and it's so much so that, like, the sequels to the Ultimates miniseries, like, kept getting delayed because they, you know, they still wanted the artist and he, like, was painstakingly oh. drawing this these scenes with these, like, you know, lens flare effects and stuff. Gotcha. Um, but, yeah. Um, it's, I don't know, it's rough for mm -hmm. the Ultimates. You mm -hmm. know, they really try to just, like maybe ground them a little too much in reality. Oh, gotcha. I, know, I, I just, I remember a scene with Hulk that was, like, when he first, um, like, when he first transformed in that series, um, that was, like, Hulk said some really weird stuff. Yeah, Hulk is bad. Um, Hank Pym is bad. Hank Pym is bad. Um, and... That's all that I remember. Oh, the Maximoff yeah, twins Maximoff. are oh, great. That's literally Wait, what, the other what, one I want to Weren't they about. the ones that were, like, a little too close? Yes. That... <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, that is the radio safe way to say it, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we, we, we referenced them in the Archie episode. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, isn't Iron Man, like, isn't, doesn't he also suck? Like, we make fun of him being an alcoholic, but this is, like... Where, like, in front of a meeting of Congress, like, Tony is out drunk, and then, like, Hank Pym tries to come out and stop him, and then, like, he outs 
egg as a wife beater in front of like all of Congress? Yeah, I think so. I think that does happen. Huh. Okay. So wait. All right. Cool. When did Tony stop looking blue? Oh yeah. So that's a thing. Basically, um, the uh, who's who's Ender's Game author? Jake. Orson Scott Card. Orson Scott Card. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so he, I get. Okay, okay how's Scott, it been in? Orson Scott Card no, wrote is... the original Ultimate Iron Man miniseries. Um, is that the one where he has like the secret um, brother? No. Well, th- this is the one where um, his mother got monkey blood, <laughs> and then his organs just started growing really fast, or like they just kept growing, and they created a kind of like liquid. That would, you know, you would spread it all over Tony's body, and it would keep him from being in pain. Yeah, it's confusing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, basically, though, all yeah, right. Okay. First of all, first clarification: the one with his secret brother is actually main continuity. That actually happened. <laughs> oh, of course it is. Great, um, awesome. Love that. All, yeah, basically, so that's the Orson Scott Card Ultimate Iron Man story. It's confusing, it's weird, it's barely about <laughs> Iron Man, it feels like. Um, and, yeah, basically, that once he got introduced in Ultimate, they, like, completely retconned it and basically eventually explained that um, it was actually a TV show that um, Stark Industries commissioned to, like, basically, like, throw off the trail of, like, what Iron Man actually is, and, hmm. like, huh. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I guess. Sure. But you know what? Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. 100%, I get so, it. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they just, they were, you know, they were really experimental in the early days of, um, of the Ultimate Universe, so they're just like, yeah, sure, Orson Scott Card, come mm. write a comic, and he was like, I want to do Iron Man. Yeah, just do whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. I think a lot of what I don't like about Ultimates, like even though you uh, did like praise the art earlier, I don't like the art style, and I don't like like the different designs. Like Thor's new design, don't like it. Hulk Gray, don't like it. Uh, Iron Man suits. Haven't seen a single one that I like. It's, it's the like, only reference. It just doesn't look good. I the don't only like it. To Thor in his design that I have is the Ultimate Avengers movie, and I like that. He's got like this weird Stormbreaker looking like hammer axe thing, but it doesn't look as good as Stormbreaker or like Beta Ray Bill's hammer. It's like, it just yeah. doesn't look good. Um, I will say that while I haven't read Ultimates, I do like his, like, kind of, um, how he is supposed to be in the Ultimates, how how I've been told he is, which is basically, like, everybody is all like, yeah, he's just an, a homeless man that got, <laughs> uh, like, you know, shield-level weapons, you know, these, like, electricity-based weapons, but then he's like, no, I'm a god from Asgard, and it's like, it's never, like, nobody ever goes to Asgard, you know, that never gets revealed who is huh. right. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me honestly want to read Okay, that. I like that. I like that if that's true. If it's not, yeah. then... Uh. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm pretty confident in saying that, that that is the way it goes. It never gets revealed, and that's, like, the event, or the ultimate, sorry. Think that, you know, he's just crazy, but also he's good at fighting, and <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. really strong. Uh, so he really believes that he's a Norse god. Mm-hmm. I mean, hey, I guess if you'd never see another one, then like maybe. Yeah. But yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, I think that's a good endpoint for the show. Mm-hmm. Um. Had a really good time reading Ultimate Spider-Man. Yep. Um, I would recommend it to people now. <laughs> <laughs> you you have proven. <laughs> yeah. The Ultimate Spider-Man game that was released in 2005. 
but that game probably introduced me to Ultimate Spider-Man, and so that's probably a <laughs> same a with big me. part yeah. of why I enjoy the series. I will say. <laughs> yeah, that's good to know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Also, important information is if you listen to KSUA and you've never listened to our show, that's because we're new to this time slot, Mondays mm-hmm. from five to seven. Um, so. If you liked listening to us, which I would assume if you were have stayed the entire time, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> then you can catch us Mondays, 5 to 7. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we also have a YouTube channel. Yes. The comic panel, It's Comic Time. Mm-hmm. We yeah. have a Facebook page. Mm-hmm. We have an Instagram. They're all um, the comic panel because mm-hmm. that is the name of our show. Or you can find us, or you can use at It's Comic Time. Mm, right. For Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, do we have anything else? Would you like me to say what next oh, week's book is going to be? Uh, it is, at least if yeah, my yes, rotation is prob- correct, which it's been yeah, what we've been going yeah, off of, so <laughs> I, I hope it is. It's going to be Star Wars, Darth Vader, Volume 1, Vader by uh, Kieran Gillen. Okay. Not the actress Karen Gillan. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Um, to those listening who want to listen again at Monday from 5 to 7, go ahead and check that out. You can um, I would check your local resources like the library or the Hoopla app before um, going out and buying it. Um, until then, I am Cody. I'm Jay Long. And I'm Jacob. Our other host Shawenta had to leave early, but he was here. Um, until then, this has been the comic panel.